I might have made a mistake with the Zimichu video that we have uploaded. Yep, this is Johnny from Gallard Group, realizing way after the fact that I might have mixed up some stories with the Zimichi. There are a lot of named characters. I got two of them confused while we were recording. I did not know about this until I saw a comment on the Zimichi video. I snapped back at it until an hour later I realized, oh no, I actually did get the lore wrong. So this is going to be hopefully our only video doing a retraction on the Zimichi video. I can't go back in and edit what we've already recorded. So here we go. As for what should we call this? Well, the story is only going to cover, say, Samuel, Dracon, Lugoge, and the Eldest. So that seems like a good enough name for it. We'll call it that. This first story is right on the heels of the First Bali War. We talk about Samuel, the Salubri, the child, direct child of Salat, and possibly the strongest Salubri to ever live. In his crusade to purge the world of all evil, be it in the form of demons, the abyss, the worm, even if he didn't always know what it looked like, it was still evil to him, he came across Zimichi. As we know from, if you watched the video or if you already know the lore, Zimichi by this point was sitting pretty. He already had all of his children under his control. He was beneath the Carpathian Mountains, he had made his pact with Kupala, he had made the pact with the Sacred Fire Flower, and really the guy could just body hop between his own children whenever he wanted. I mean, after all, this used to be an awakened mage before he was turned into an antediluvian. Pretty powerful guy, all said and done. Samuel entered his haven during his crusade of purging evil. As for how Samuel got there, the clan book Salubri said it was on his way back from a little crusade he had in Europe, and he just so happened to come across the eldest. The Zemichi clan book says that Samuel knew where Zemichi was and was coming after him to kill him. Whatever the reason, the two of them clashed. Samuel entered the chamber alone, and Zemichi fought him by himself. In the battle, Samuel did technically kill the original body of Zemichi, but Zemichi got one last death rattle in and managed to behead Samuel in the final clash. Samuel stayed dead. Zimichi had backups. After all, he can just hop back into his giant mound of flesh setting beneath the Carpathian Mountains and just find a new host to possess. He was fine. As for the Salubri, well, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but they didn't fare nearly as well as the Zimichi would. Now, this part comes from Beckett's Jihad Diary. I'm not exactly a fan of that book. Uh, to me, it's too many cooks in one kitchen spoiling the broth, but we'll go over what was in there. In regards to how Zimichi got out of that chamber, apparently Dracon, one of his direct children, possibly the nicest out of Zimichi's direct descendants, scooped up what remained of Zimichi after Outno being smote with a holy sword that set on fire, and was carried by Dracon, Dracon for nine months, and through some weird Zemichi male pregnancy, uh, that seems to be a thing with Zemichi a lot. I mean, that happened with Sasha Vykos, this is happening with Dracon. There better not be a third example of this. Hopefully. And after nine months, we got a new body for Zemichi that just grew its way out of Dracon's body. Yet, as Zemichi are a little bit strange. Eventually, Dracon would just dump that body back off to Yarek, the guy who was running his Cathedral of Flesh, where Zemichi would eventually remember who he was and go back to his plot of winning the World of Darkness game. I'm not exactly a big fan of the story, but there you go. That's how Zemichi uh, survived his encounter with Samael. Now for the part of the video where we talk about Lugosh. Why did I get this guy mixed up before with the Zimichi video? I, in a moment of confusion, mistook Dracon for Lugoj. I got the two names mixed up. What Lugoj did with the Diabori, I say in air quotes, of Zimichi, that happened, but here's the actual context that took place in. 
Lugos won't be sired until somewhere very, very early in the 13th century. The man was something of a psychopath. He started off at Generation 6, but very quickly deaporized his way up to Generation 5. As most of Michi do, the masquerade, humanity, none of that matters. Now, why did Zimichi allow Lugos to do what he's going to do? A bit of a mystery, but given that Zimichi has control over almost everything, I think he just let this happen for the sake of entertainment. This was, say, where a story takes place, the beginning of the Anarch Revolt. 1413 is our date. The La Sombra and the Zimichi were getting pretty sick of the Camarilla dunking on them. After all, seven clans ganging up against everyone else. Not a fun time to be a vampire outside the Camarilla. And the mission to break the blood bonds. The La Sombra did it all right. You had Gratiano diabolize what might have been La Sombra? I don't know. It kind of gets a little ambiguous with the Gehenna book, whether or not that actually was La Sombra. But regardless, thanks to his actions, the blood bonds were broken amongst the La Sombra. The Zemichi looked at that and said, we could do that too. Lugos had disrespect for a certain leader amongst the Zemichi. One, I hope I'm saying his name right, Bilobog. The dude was known as the White God. It was a, once again, another Zemichi that, thanks to his ludicrous power, was seen as a god and worshipped as such. Lugos had no respect for him. Bilobog during his unlife, fought many wars against the Tremere and against the Mongol Horde. The dude was stuck between two different theaters. After a massive battle that took place before the Anarch Revolt, Lugos saw that now was a good time to finally get his, say, grudge match over with Bailabog. The dude was injured in a massive fight. Lugos realized that if he was going to diaporize a Generation Four Zemichi, that day was the day. Using blood from Lombok, uh, he's not too important to the story, but keep his name in mind. This is the dude who had something to do with Dracula's creation. Uh, pretty, pretty important name amongst the Zemichi. He partnered up with Velia, who you might remember that name if you have read Mexico by Night, the vampire book. And the two of them eventually hunted down and found Kupala's sacred fire flower. Casting a ritual using Lombok's blood, they managed to... The ritual itself is a little ambiguous. We're not given a description as to what the ritual was, but we are told whatever it was, it was a success. The blood bonds broke. And following Gratiano's example, we got to diabolize the Antediluvian. And, oh, lucky us, Balabog is in the same spot. Lugos and his groupies ran all the way over to the main haven for the Zemichi. I'm assuming that's going to be in the Carpathian Mountains. They fought Bailabog and won. Lugos got the killing blow, successfully diabolized the soul of Bailabog, and then turned to what he thought was the Zemichi and to Luffian. Now, shouldn't this guy be thinking if this guy was smote to death with a holy fire sword by Samuel, shouldn't he, I don't know, not have a body? I don't know, maybe think this through, Lugos. Whatever this proxy body was, Lugos attacked it, diabolized it, only to immediately invite pure, unfiltered essence of the Eldest into his body. The Eldest just assumed Lugos' identity right then and there. Man suffered a complete ego death, and now the Eldest is Lugos. But he's going to make it look like he's dead. Lugos is a very suitable host. After all, this is a relatively young body from a vampire that's not suffering from the, uh, say, the curse of the serial diabarist where you only devour vampires. Along with that, he got just gained a lot of respect and a lot of authority amongst the Zemichi, which is now a completely lawless clan. I don't know, something something controlled opposition. Zemichi sees no reason to break the masquerade about being Lugos. He assumes the identity and, well, that's where the retraction stops. So, yeah, sorry that we got this wrong. I just wasn't paying enough attention in the video. And one mistake snowballed into a giant snarl. Sorry, I don't want to be a guy who spreads misinformation about World of Darkness. There's already too much confusion and too, man too much misinformation involving this game. I'll try to pay more attention in later episodes. 
and hopefully we won't need to make another retraction, but here it is. Here's that story corrected. Everything else in that Zemichi video is fine. In regards to Shargas, in regards to about the Zemichi doing Modern Knights, in regards to their connections, all that's fine. We'll talk about them again when it comes to Constantinople by night and Mexico by night, but until then, sign out.